Social media content has become progressively more and more degenerate over the years. What was once considered unacceptable has become normal. Our moral boundaries have disappeared. Nihilism has risen and a belief in God has declined. In this world where what is right and wrong can be debated, we risk the normalization of the darkest behaviors, pulling us into a world where everything gets normalized. Nihilism stands at the root of this phenomenon, where the belief in God erodes and with it, it strips life of its meaning and purpose. As faith dims in the guiding light of divine morality, we're like ships lost at sea, each charting our own course through the fog of moral ambiguity. This shift from a universal to a personal moral compass is deeply societal, echoing through our culture, art and the very fabric of our interactions. Nihilism, like a shadow, has crept through the corridors of history, evolving and shaping itself with the times. Its seeds were sown in ancient Greece, where skeptics like Georgius questioned the very existence of anything beyond the observable. Fast forward to the 19th century, and nihilism found fertile ground in Russia, where it grew from a philosophical skepticism into a cultural movement, challenging established norms and the divine right of kings. Enter Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher who gave nihilism a megaphone. Nietzsche saw nihilism as the crumbling of Western morality, a sort of philosophical anarchy in the face of a dead god. His ideas would echo through time, influencing existentialists and postmodernists who further untethered society from traditional anchors. Today, nihilism isn't just a philosophical curiosity, it's a cultural phenomenon. It resonates with the youth who face a world of climate crises, political chaos and societal inequality. Online, it's a meme, a shared joke in the face of absurdity, but also a serious reflection of our times. Nihilism has evolved from ancient skepticisms to a modern worldview, one that questions everything and finds certainty in nothing. As the belief in God declines, so do our values and morals, accelerated by social media algorithms that favour and push outrageousness and degeneracy. This loss of boundaries and a moral code is a slippery slope that can quickly lead to a world of chaos where previous taboos become the everyday norm. Imagine you're on a ship sailing through the vast ocean of life. For centuries, the towering lighthouse of God has guided our moral compass, providing a beacon of right and wrong. Whenever someone disagrees on what's moral, you could point to a book and prove to them why they're wrong. But now, that lighthouse seems to be shrinking, its light dimming, and simultaneously evaporating our moral code. This isn't just about the decline in religious belief, it's about the disintegration of a framework that once provided clear-cut answers to what's right and wrong. In the good old days, if you found yourself in the stormy seas of moral quandaries, you could look to the lighthouse for guidance. But as faith in this divine beacon fades, we find ourselves adrift in a sea of moral relativism. Without an absolute moral code handed down from the heavens, everything becomes negotiable. This shift is not just philosophical, it's deeply personal and societal. It's reflected in our pop culture, our music, our art and our memes. It's a response to a world that seems increasingly uncertain and chaotic, where traditional values and beliefs are constantly being questioned. For believers in God, their moral compass can be explained by pointing to the existence of God as a moral guide, giving followers of God a rule book for what's considered good or bad. They have a lighthouse guiding their ship, providing them with a sense of direction and purpose. But as more and more people lose faith in this lighthouse, we see the rise of nihilism and a breakdown of our moral boundaries. This is happening in real time, the best example is the degeneration of social media. 
I'm sure you've noticed that content creators have become progressively more degenerate and out of pocket over the years. What was once considered provocative content in the past has become normal compared to today's standards. Relatively harmless YouTube pranks have turned into downright stupidity for attention. The bar for what is considered unacceptable has been set higher and higher every time someone crosses it. And with no universal moral code a society can agree on, we slowly adapt and spiral down the path where everything gets normalised. Without a solid moral code, anyone can do anything and no one can explain to them why it's good or bad in any true sense. They can't point to any god or rule book. We can no longer universally agree on what's right or wrong. It's like everyone's sailing their own ship with no lighthouse to guide them. This is the crux of nihilism. The belief that life has no intrinsic meaning or value and that morality doesn't exist in the traditional sense and is an invention of humans explained through God. Think about it for a second. Does good or bad really exist? Obviously, there are things we can all agree are considered immoral, like stealing from a homeless person or picking on someone weaker than you. But let's test this with the thought experiment and dive back into the stormy seas of moral dilemmas. Picture yourself aboard a humble fishing vessel, navigating through the fierce storm in the heart of the ocean. Among the crew are Michael and Lisa, two individuals with starkly different beliefs. As the storm rages, they find a small weather-beaten boat adrift, carrying several desperate refugees. Michael, guided by his deep faith, immediately recalls the parable of the Good Samaritan. We must help them, he declares. Just as the Bible teaches us to love and aid our neighbours in need, Lisa, however, is concerned about their own survival, the limited resources on board and the added risk of taking more people onto their already burdened vessel. Michael turns to the Bible, seeing it as an unerring moral compass in his storm both literal and metaphorical. He argues that their duty, as outlined by scripture, is clear. To extend compassion and assistance, trusting in God's guidance and provision. Lisa, while empathetic, feels that practical considerations and self-preservation cannot be ignored. This tempest-tossed scenario is more than a mere fable. It's a vivid representation of the moral decisions we face. When Michael anchors his choices in biblical teachings, he finds clarity and conviction in his actions. Without this clarity, we are in danger of going down a dark path that begins with small arguments like our fishing vessel's dilemma and degrades to a world where even the most abhorrent behaviours find undue sympathy. In a nation where the currents of nihilism have begun to erode the bedrock of moral absolutes, debates such as the nature of minor attracted individuals emerge. Advocates for its use such as licensed professional counsellor from Pennsylvania and an assistant professor at Old Dominion University argue that it helps to destigmatize these individuals and promote understanding. This term, a linguistic attempt to soften the harsh reality of pedophilia, reflects a society adrift in the murky waters of moral relativism. Like sailors lost at sea without a compass, a society without a firm moral anchor, such as the guiding principles found in sacred texts, finds itself caught in a whirlpool of subjective morality. Here, the line between compassion and a tacit acceptance of fundamentally harmful behaviours become dangerously blurred. As our vessel navigates through these treacherous waters, society faces a critical choice. Do we follow the beacon of established moral wisdom, illuminated by teachings like those in the Bible, which unequivocally condemns such predatory actions? Or do we sail into the fog of moral ambiguity, where even the most grievous acts can be rationalised and normalised under the guise of understanding and tolerance? The modern preference for scientific explanations casts doubt on the literal interpretations of religious texts like the biblical story of creation, disproven by scientific explanations of human origins. This leads to an interesting question, can faith coexist with scientific fact? 
For many, embracing religion means navigating these apparent contradictions. Perhaps the key is not choosing between faith or science, but in finding a way to let them complement each other, allowing us to draw deep moral insights without dismissing scientific progress. There are those who have proposed solutions to this seeming dichotomy. Oxford mathematician and Christian John Lennox argues that the mathematical intelligibility of nature is evidence for a rational spirit behind this universe. He suggests that the ability to do science is one of his main reasons for believing in God. As we grapple with this erosion of shared moral values, Friedrich Nietzsche's insight beckons us to a different kind of responsibility. Nietzsche challenges us with the idea that he who has a why to live for can bear almost anyhow, suggesting that the creation of personal moral boundaries is not just an option, but a necessity in a world where communal morals waver. The task before us is not merely to lament the decline of collective morals, but to rise to the occasion of building our own moral framework. In today's society, each of us has the opportunity to be a waver of ethical purpose, crafting a narrative of integrity and meaning that stands firm amidst the shift of societal values.